Hi, my name is Manu Alikani. I am Dean and Professor at CITOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CITOR channel. Today we are starting a new series called Biology of Orthodontics. The first topic of this series is Biology of Tooth Movement that will be presented in many parts. Let's start with the question of why tooth move in response to orthodontics forces. For many years, the dominant theory for explaining the biology of tooth movement in response to orthodontics forces was the compression tension theory. Based on this theory, when we apply orthodontics forces, in one side we have compression in the direction of tooth movement, and in the other side we have tension away from the direction of tooth movement. Bone recognize those compression stresses and in response to compression stresses goes through resorption. While in the other side, bone recognize the tension stresses and in response to the tension stresses goes through formation. But how bone recognize the compression and tension stresses and start to respond? That was a problem that needed to be addressed. Two explanations were suggested. One was physiological adaptation. Based on this explanation, application of orthodontics forces is recognized by matrix of the bone, and that will activate the bone cells. Bone has three types of cells. Osteocyte, that are main cells in the structure of the bone. Osteoblast, that are the cells that covering the surface of the bone, whether from outside, that is called periosteum, or further from inside, that is called endosteum. And then a series of the cells that are not uh, residents inside the bone, but they can get activated and come in bone, and that's called osteoclast. So these cells, especially the osteocyte, consider the one that orchestrate the movement. Osteocyte recognize the mechanical stimulation in response to orthodontics forces. And based on the direction of the force, activate the osteoclast to resolve the bone and activate the osteoblast to make the bone. The theory seems very interesting. However, it had many deficiencies that uh, could not be answered by the science. For example, bone in any place in our body actually forms in response to compression forces. If you want to increase your bone density, exercise is a good thing and exercise is full of compression stresses. And in response to those compression stresses, bone forms. On the other hand, if you reduce your activity, the bone resorbs. In lack of stresses, bone goes through atrophy. So this could not explain why the tooth move in response to orthodontics forces. Another problem was majority of appliances in orthodontics produce static forces. Bone does not recognize the static forces. Their research has shown that. Therefore, these two major contradictory findings in science brought a little bit doubt on physiological adaptation of the bone theory in response to orthodontics forces. Another explanation was maybe bone pathologically responds to orthodontics forces. In that explanation, in response to application of orthodontics forces, we may induce macrofracture inside the bone, and that macrofracture stimulates the remodeling machinery, brings the osteoclast inside the area, and that will cause bone resorption, and a healing phase of it that brings the osteoblast in the area, and that cause formation. This theory also had a major deficiencies that could not be explained by the science. For example, if macrofracture theory was correct, one would be expecting that by increasing the magnitude of the force, the magnitude of the macrofracture is increased and therefore the rate of tooth movement should increase. However, we know that by increasing the magnitude of orthodontics forces, the rate of tooth movement does not increase. On the other hand, if the macrofracture theory was correct, in response to the light forces, there shouldn't be any tooth movement. However, from clinical experience, we know that tooth move in response to light forces. Whether physiologic adaptation 
or pathologic adaptation. The compression tension theory got significant criticism when it's coming to the implant and ankylosed teeth. We know that both implant and ankylosed tooth does not move in response to application of orthodontics forces. When we respect the same force cause compression and cause tension, why the same phenomenon does not occur when we apply the same force on implant or ankylosed tooth? All the clinicians experience that so much that we are using implant as our anchor for treatment of orthodontics, same as ankylosed tooth. So it seems that there is too many holes to explain the compression tension theory with this assumption that bone is the direct target of orthodontics uh, forces. Next time, we will discuss the indirect theory of orthodontics tooth movement, where the bone is not a direct target. I hope you enjoyed this session of CTOR channel. If you want to have more mechanotropy lectures and biology of tooth movement lectures and cases, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the like button. Thank you.